Beautiful people, welcome in, welcome in. It's good to have you here. Today we're going to be talking about a build that is great for GM content, great for master content, and overall a really good build for any content you are playing with a team. However, this may be a little bit different than what you're typically used to seeing, at least for me, because I generally try and make all oh, super high damage, infinite nades everywhere, destroy the game, and things of that nature. This time we're going for a bit of a different approach. We're going for an all-out support style build. Because in the tough end content, hey man, someone's got to do it, right? And trust me, bro, with this setup, you're going to be supplying everything your teammates need. Healing, a damage buff, heavy ammo, wolf pack rounds, anything, bro. This build's got it covered and on lockdown. And before I hop directly into the breakdown, I got to ask if you ever want to get your games in their DLC for a cheaper price, make sure to head over to Instant Gaming, top link in the description. They got you covered, along with a free monthly game giveaway, if that also piques your interest. Because sometimes saving money feels just as good as making money. Alright, let's begin. Okay, build breakdown section time. Let's do it. We're going totally different than what I normally like to do. Generally, it's destroy everything. Operation, pure damage, destroy everything. Nah, bro. This time, we're going pure support, helping out. This is like a GM type of build. That's why we have a freaking anvil on our head. So we're going to be using Touch of Flame. This is important because our healing grenade is going to give us times two resto and a bigger juice of cure. We like that. You like that. Your teammates like that. Everybody likes that. I'm personally not using Heat Rises that much with this style of play. So I have an Icarus Dash to move a little bit more and get out of stickier situation. Pick your preference. Healing Grenade. Celestial Fire for hitting ranged enemies, especially in this week's GM. Celestial Fire is very useful. Healing Rift. Yes. Since we are going to be spreading out all the support, all the buffs, all the help we can do. Healing Rift. Heal your allies. Fragments. These are important. I like Ember Searing, but I feel like for this particular setup, it's actually really not that needed here. But it can help you get your melee back a little bit. Get you a Fire Sprite here and there. And has a nice little stat spike. So I always like this fragment. But I will be honest, it's not the most important in this build. I will tell you what is the most important in this build is ember of benevolence applying restoration cure or radiant to allies grants increased grenade melee and class ability regeneration for a short duration i'm telling you in gms this basically means you have hoil a bit of a watered down version of hoil but nonetheless you definitely have a lot of ability up times in a gm which is helpful Ember of Torches to give our teammates and ourselves Radiant that plays once again into Ember of Benevolence. And Celestial Fire will allow us to proc Radiant at ranged enemies because you still have to make contact with an enemy in order to actually proc your Ember of Torches. And then Ember of Solace, Radiant and Restoration effects applied to you have increased duration. You can't go wrong with that. Longer times to resto, longer Radiant. I feel like this is a nice cherry on top to round everything out. You definitely want your Ember of Torches and your Ember of Benevolence. Healing Grenade, Celestial Fire, Healing Rift, Absolute Must, along with your Touch of Flame. Do I really need to tell you that a Well of Radiance is a must on us? Fucking <laughs> No, I don't. Come on now. So, since this is a support style build, Cenotaph anvil helmet that is big fashion once again since this is a gm build cenotaph we're making heavy for everybody boom if you wanted to change it out for like a varieties brow setup i mean you could try that but you know for a gm no one's gonna complain about you putting on this anvil on your head and because of that i'm running either one of two exotics gallahorn to give my teammates wolf packs or of course divinity i feel like this week's gm doesn't need a divinity as much plus i like having a shoot to loot trace rifle on the mods i'll be real with you guys they're not that important i have something like a dynamo to help get my super back because i'm gonna be i'm telling you you're gonna be popping your abilities as long as you are giving these buffs from your subclass to your teammates due to ember of benevolence you want to prioritize your stats in the discipline resilience and recovery of course that goes without saying and you just use your mods to play into that i have a heavy ammo finder and a harmonic siphon on from running gallahorn really useful you can totally change this out for a heavy ammo scout that's your preference fastball so i can chuck my healing grenades further to my teammates impact induction to give my grenade cooldown even quicker celestial fire coming in clutch resist mods on your chest piece i have stacks on stacks because orbs are a little bit more of a commodity in gms so only needing two orbs in order to have three to proc a special finny since i am on double special is very useful reaper is very useful in making orbs in a higher end content setting once again 
we're going to be going through our abilities a lot you're going to be popping your healing rift a lot and since you only need two orbs in order to get a special finny off with three stacks of armor charge this can be very useful recoup invigoration also very useful as well and any orbs that are made at a distance i got that shoot to loot trace rifle on and since it's a gm style build try and have weapons that can stun champions i'm using the radiant effect and well of radiance to have anti-barrier although you know my teammates have wish enders and a riptide is very good at dealing with both overloads and unstoppables even though we do have unstoppable fusion in the artifact this season it's still good even without having unstoppable fusion for future seasons i will say the most useful mod from the artifact this season would probably be elemental embrace because you're going to be spreading out so many subclass buffs to your teammates radiant cure restoration you're supplying the pack hunter you're making heavy you're supplying everything your teammates could possibly need you're a machine embrace it and kick ass so now that we have the build breakdown out of the way, you guys can see and understand that we're not specking fully into the offensive capabilities that you can possess as a solar warlock. And since the build is mainly designed for GMs in any master content, maybe like a master raid, or even a day one scenario when there's just a lot of majors that you can mark with the Cenotaph, a few good examples of this would be like the Death Singer encounter and Crota's encounter for that matter. All have markable enemies. You're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck with this setup and keeping you and all your teammates alive, supplying them with all the buffs they could need and putting in some pretty good work. And if you really wanted to, bro, you could even slap on Rapid Fire Ranger to try and apply a weakened effect here and there as well. Of course, it's only going to be useful if you are on G-Horn duty, so you don't have your divinity on you. You could still apply a weakened effect for your teammates. Obviously, when most people think of Cenotaph, you pair it with the divinity, it makes the most sense. However, you can also easily be on Galahorn duty as well. The point is, is that the build is really flexible and it's not relying on like one exotic weapon, but you are going to need one of the two exotic helmets that I mentioned. If you are going to be using a trace rifle, definitely put on the Cenotaph. It just makes so much heavy. But if you don't have the anvil helmet and you still want to go about supplying a lot of good support for your team, obviously a rarity's brow is going to be really good. In that case, you would probably want to equip some sort of other solar weapon than just your G-Horn. But I figured I would at least mention the Verity's Brow for this type of setup because it also works really well here. It's just that in a GM setting where there's so, so many champions to mark with a Cenotaph, it's it's impossible to go wrong with the Cenotaph. It's free heavy. Who doesn't like free heavy? You could also always combine that with somebody on your fire team running Aeons. And when they finish a marked enemy, you'll also get some heavy from their Aeons finishers. The person with the Aeons will also get a heavy break from the marked target from your Cenotaph and then... And anybody else in your fire team, they're just going to have two sources of heavy drop from one enemy, which is always, always welcomed. And when using this build in some GMs, I found that it was very rare in which I would find myself in a situation where I just didn't have a single ability up. That just doesn't happen with Ember of Benevolence. I'm telling you, bro, you're going to basically have Hoyle on Solar Warlock with this build. And you're going to keep the good times rolling with all those juicy buffs that you're going to be holding like it's Halloween. Because you're going to be dishing them out like candy. And considering that it's also almost halloween in real life i mean hey why not get festive who wants to be an anvil for halloween <laughs> but in all seriousness though guys this build is really really good in high-end content especially if there's a lot of enemies that you can mark with your cenotaph some breaches can be a little bit more tricky to use in gms but a cenotaph with healing grenades and heals just everywhere and just buffs in general really allow you to put in some work in some of these grandmaster nightfalls and other high-end content. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts and opinions on this build down in the comments below. I'll also be leaving a dim link to it towards the top of the description if you want to check it and use it. Thank you so much for watching the video. Remember, if you ever want to get your games in their DLC for a cheaper price, you check out Instant Gaming. Top two links in the description. Second one is a monthly game giveaway that they do. You guys be safe. Take care. Consider subscribing, and we'll see you in the next one.